appreciate you. Appreciate sir. Okay. So now, uh, yesterday we were looking at how to graph this type of function, which was question three. Three. This is three what? Uh, three B. So question three B. Uh, it talks about us using uh use transformation of f of x is equals to one over x. Huh? Yeah, we're using that one to manipulate this guy here. And then you notice that uh, h of x is equal to f of x plus two. When we do the, we use that transformation for f of x one over x one, which is equivalent to this part here. So now this two, which is here, just telling you that uh, it is your horizontal asymptote, isn't it? So we're shifting upward to tend. So from, from, from here, the origin, we have to move upward to 10. So when we move upward to 10, which means our graph for one over X as well, it will shift. Know that uh, when you're approaching the graph for one over X, you normally start from, you know that uh, one over X, we can't uh, have a denominator here because to zero. So the values here for the domain, if we find the domain for this one over X, we discover that uh, it's all real numbers, isn't it? All your numbers except uh, zero, isn't it? So we can put any number in this function, one over x, and it will still be valid. So now, if we try to pick any numbers, right? Let's say one. If we pick one, we're using this one. Since there is a shift, right? We're using this line here. So if you pick one, isn't it? You discover that uh, one into one, it is uh, it is one, right? Plus this. Uh, oh, let's just stick with this one. One into one, it will be one. So you just put here, say one comma one, isn't it? Then you pick another line again. Since we've already shifted with this one, so we ignore the two, since we've already made the shift, isn't it? So we pick another one. If we were to pick, for instance, uh, two, isn't it? So two into one, it will give us something like uh, uh, Okay, sorry about that. It seems I lost the network. Yeah, so as I was saying here, when you have this function here, there's a, a horizontal shift, isn't it? We're moving upward, isn't it? It's two tens because our vertical axis is here, isn't it? So I've shifted from the origin. The origin is here, isn't it? So I've moved upwards two tens. So now when you move upward two tens, we remain with uh, one over x. Then you know that uh, when we pick values here, the, the only value we can't pick here, the domain for this function is uh, all your numbers except zero, isn't it? So you can pick any number in the, in the domain that we have, and we discover that this function will still be defined. Now, if we pick one, we say it is one into one, isn't it? To give us one. So our y will be one, and then our x as well is one. So we say one comma one, isn't it? We put it there. Then if you pick a number here, for instance, let's say uh, 0 0.1 or 2, you discover that uh, to pick 0 0.1 into 1, the answer here to give us uh, x would be 0 0.1, right? But uh, y to be 10 somewhere here. So this graph will bend upward. Since this guy, the vertical asymptote is changing, so it can't cross this line here. So it will bend upward. Then it will be going this way again when they, we increase the numbers of x. The same concept to apply when you start picking the negative part here. The graph will go downward while it's coming from this negative infinity. When you're picking numbers, let's say negative five here, it comes like that and it will, it will bend like that when you're approaching on your graph. Hope that one is clear. Then we ended on. Okay, 
this is the one we are looking at today. Uh, are you guys able to get me though? Yes. yes sir. All right, wonderful. So we're looking at uh, question four. Yes. Thank you. Question four, uh, this function here, which is uh, question four J. So when you look at this function, we first uh, expand the numerator, right? And you have X minus three, open cross X minus one, over X plus one squared, isn't it? So now, when you have that, we know that finding the vertical asymptote, we equate this guy down here, isn't it? We equate it to zero, then we play around with it a bit. We discover that our X value is negative one, which is uh, when you put negative one here, the function will be undefined which means that this guy, the values that make the function to be undefined are what we're calling our vertical asymptote. These are the values where our graph cannot pass through because the, the, when the graph pass through the vertical asymptote, it will be undefined. So the horizontal one, when you look at uh, this uh, x squared here, the coefficient it's one, isn't it? Then when you look at this one, when you expand it, there will be an x squared here when you play around with it. Now the coefficient for this one, it's one, when you're looking at horizontal asymptote, when you have uh, the powers that are equal, isn't it? in the numerator and denominator, isn't it? they have the same powers. We normally divide the coefficient of those two powers. So we say one, the power of this guy is one, isn't it? we put one there, and then the power of the coefficient so of this guy is one again. So we say the coefficient of this x here is one over the coefficient of this x, which is here, it's one. So we divide, we get the one here as our horizontal asymptote. So now we find the y-intercept. How do we find the y-intercept? We equate x to zero, isn't it? So now when we equate x to zero, we plug in zero there, zero there, zero there, isn't it? And we find that uh, our y-intercept- Sorry, sir, before, excuse me, sir, sorry. Yes. Sorry, God, sorry. Yes. Hello? Yes, I did, I can get you. Before you go any further, there when you thinking. Now, when finding the vertical asymptote, yes. Um, can you kindly repeat what you just said? I'm not very clear. Okay, when we're finding the vertical asymptote, right? We're looking for those values that will make the function to be undefined. You have gotten it. Eh? So now, what are those values that will make this function to be undefined? So we know that we equate this guy. We know that when this denominator is close to zero, this function will be undefined. So we say that uh, let us equate this uh, thing, which is down here to zero, isn't it? Then we find those values which will make this function to be undefined. Then you know that it is x plus one. There's a square there, right? So it's simple. We can square root this guy and square root zero. Now the square root of zero, it is still zero. So our x plus one is equal to zero. Then the one goes that side. It becomes negative one. So the vertical asymptote is negative one. When we plug in negative one there, this function will be undefined. So this, the values that we get that makes this function to be undefined is what we are calling the vertical asymptote. Is it now clear, please? Yes. All right, we proceed. So now since we have found the vertical asymptote and the horizontal asymptote, we now find the y-intercept so now that when you're finding the y-intercept, we equate x is equal to zero. When we do that, we discover that when you plug in zero in that function of ours, it will be negative three times negative one, it's just positive three, isn't it? Now positive three divided by one, it's a three which is here. So our y-intercept will take place at zero comma three. So we have zero comma three there. Now for the x-intercept, our y is zero, isn't it? Now when y is zero, when y is zero, let's say equate this guy to zero, isn't it? When y is zero, it simply means that it will be zero times the denominator here, it is still zero. So we just mean with this top part is equal to zero, isn't it? So that top part is what I wrote here. So it is zero is equal to x minus three open close, uh, x minus one. Then we solve for x, isn't it? So when you solve for x here on here, we have x is equal to three or x is equal to one. So our x, intercept it takes place at three comma zero and one comma zero so that is our x intercept so now when we have these values we can now go to the graph we know that we have this point we have zero comma three which is there right 
and then we also have uh, 3,0 and 1,0. 1,0 stay, isn't it? And uh, 3,0 is there, isn't it? The 3,0, which is here, we have also plotted it there. So you know that the graph has to pass through this point, isn't it? So now, when you are graphing now, you know that uh, the graph always starts like from this side, and then it is approaching this line here, the bit passing through it, isn't it? So when the graph is coming from this side, it will pass through this point, the 3,0, then it also passes through this point. Here, there are some other values which we can take, isn't it? When you just have to know that, uh, uh, you know, when you have your function, you just have to find what's the domain of that function. Then the values that, you, like for instance, for this function, if we are to say what's the domain for this function, we, we just have to say that uh, it's uh, all your numbers, the step negative one, isn't it? So we can pick uh, any number in that, uh, in the in the domain or in the domain that we have, we can pick any real number and then the function is still be defined. So when you pick those numbers, we're picking them from this side, isn't it? it we are like, for instance, of, we can pick two here. So now if we plug in two here, you discover that it will be plotted somewhere in this line, of course, of this uh, of this graph of ours, isn't it? So the line will start from this side, then it passes through this point, and then again it passes through the one comma zero, it passes through three, but it cannot cross this uh this bit asymptote, but the line can always cross the horizontal one. The horizontal asymptote, the line can cross it because uh, even if it crosses, the function will still be defined. But for the vertical one, it can never cross this line because this line will make the function to be undefined. Hope it's clear. Then when it crosses this part, it starts bending upward to the positive. Because if you pick uh, numbers from this side, isn't it? From this side of the function, you discover that uh, let's say if you pick uh, if you pick for instance uh, positive three, isn't it? When you put three there, this guy it will be zero, which is positive, right? So we have something like uh, if you pick three positive three, you discover that uh, this guy if you plug in three, the result will be a positive uh, integer. Then for here again, if you pick uh, three again, the result will be a positive integer, isn't it? Then if you pick three again here, the result will be a positive integer. So that tells you that positive that by positive is positive. So it is going upward, yeah? the positive uh, inf infinite. Yeah? So that, that's another way of you know uh, trying to draw this sketch. If you like to end the exam and then the term is just too rich, you can always use that one. It is always there. It's a shortcut way of understanding how the graph is going to bend. So now we have drawn this. Uh, okay, can you kindly repeat on the shortest way? Don't know if I'm talking about. I didn't understand. Okay, I'm saying that uh, let's let's assume that our x. Okay, let's pick two, isn't it? Let's say x is two. This side, isn't it? We have said that x is two. We know that the graph is coming from this side, going that way, right? So let's say x is two, because two is defined in that function. So if we plug in two here, we have. Uh, Two minus uh, three, it's negative, isn't it? Then two minus one, it's positive. Mm, this one, two plus one, two positive. Two minus three. Oh, how can I get this one? Okay, how about x intercept, y intercept. So it seems uh, to pick two. The function will give us something else. Okay, let's see. What will be the value for if we pick two here, right? We have two, isn't it? So we have two there, isn't it? It will be we have picked two, isn't it? So it will be two minus uh, two minus this guy is negative one, right? And then when we pick two here, it will be negative, isn't it? It will be positive positive there, right? Then you pick to there to be positive, isn't it? So we have seen that uh, when we multiply the positive, which is here, the negative, which is there, and uh, the positive, which is there, it is giving us uh, the negative sign here, right? Now there's a positive down there, isn't it? So you say divide by positive, so it is positive there by negative, which is negative here. So when you plug into it, it simply tells you that uh, where there's two here, the graph will bend 
our y value to be negative, isn't it? I believe that's why the graph here, if when we pick two, the graph is coming down here, isn't it? The bit, isn't it? It will pass through the negative part of y, then it will go up here. Then it will start going up when you pick uh, values probably which are greater than this. It, so when you pick values which are less than one, you have this part here, which is pointing to the negative part of y. So when you pick values which are greater than two, or let's assume four here, you discover that the graph will be going upwards, isn't it? Because it will be four. It will be going upwards, going that way. Is that clear, Sam? Yes, I've understood, I've understood. All right, thank you. Yeah. So uh, that's how you, you do the this type of question. So now for this side now, we can do the same, I believe. Huh? Well, we, are, we pick probably negative two here, isn't it? When we pick negative two, we plug it in here, isn't it? We have a negative there, right? So negative and negative, it is giving us a, a negative sign, isn't it? So, and then here we have a negative and negative, it's negative, isn't it? So here when you plug in negative two, it is giving us what, positive, right? Now, negative times negative is giving us what, positive there over the positive, which is done. So it's telling you that uh, when you pick a negative uh, value, isn't it? When you are this side, isn't it? You are coming, you're coming from this side, you're picking negative values, isn't it? From negative infinity, you're picking, picking negative values. The outcome always gives you a positive thing. It will rise up, isn't it? It will be going upward, so it's positive. So it means it's going to positive infinity. If it was giving us a negative thing, it would have bended down here. But since we're having positive, it is going upwards as well. That's how you, you go about graphing those uh, functions, those rational functions. Any questions, please? So, is, isn't this one function? How are we having two graphs? Huh? Isn't this one function? How are we having two graphs? Yes, it's one function, but uh, we have this line here. Have you seen our bit graph in the, that negative one? Eh? You have seen that one? Eh? Yes. So now we, this thing to tell you that uh, you, you should have two parts, isn't it? You have to have a graph which you it's either going up or down this side of the right uh, hand side. Then you should also have a graph which side are going down or up of your left hand side. So you should always have two. I believe that's what we have been doing for everything here. We have two, this one going that way, that one that way. Again, there's also these two parts, isn't it? We're examining every part where the function is defined. We do a graph there. Is that clear, please? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, now. And then also here, it's something like that. When drawing your first one, you always start from, is it your right, right? Mm -hmm. You always start from your right going towards your vertical asymptote. Yes. Then for this one, we start from the left going towards the vertical asymptote. So that's the last of my tests here. Is it okay now, please? Yes, thank you very much. Okay. Uh, I think uh, we go to question five. Huh? Question five. Oh, yes, yes. 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 Oh, sir. Going back to the graph. The one which you have tackled there up. It's like, I have a question. Why is the other graph causing the symptom, symptom there? Yeah, for this one, you know that uh, we we'll find that our x-intercept, eh? it's, uh, yes. this is our x-intercept, 3,0 and 1,0, right? And our y-intercept is what? 0, 0,3, isn't it? We're okay with this part, isn't it? Hello? Yes. Yeah, so we know that we have three comma zero there, isn't it? And we have one comma zero, and we have three comma zero. And then you know that uh, when you're graphing, yes. when you're graphing, mm, you know that, yeah, 
Uh, we're starting from this side. But we should keep in mind that uh, the graph must pass through the intercept that you have found. That's why we are crossing the horizontal asymptotes. We're not uh, changing anything here. Even if we cross this line here, this function is still, is still defined. Are we okay? Okay. Yes. Sir. Yes, just that there's the, there's this book which I read, then it was stating that it can't cross the asymptote. It can only reflect like that it can't meet. Okay. So I was kind of confused. It can only do what, sir? Like the way you have done with this this other thing, the, the other graph there, that should be just the same. Okay. That's what I was saying earlier, I wanted to say that it can cross the horizontal asymptote, right? But for the vertical yes. line, it can't cross. Do you know why it can't cross the vertical line? It's because when we cross the no. vertical line, the function will be undefined. Okay. Yes, but for oh, but for line, the horizontal, it can cross. It can cross. When you have been given at this point, the, your intercept, the one that are guiding you, when you don't have the this intercept, like the one, like the intercept that telling us that it must cross the horizontal asymptote, isn't it? The okay, okay, thanks, sir. I've understood. Right. I've understood now. All right. Okay, we've got to question five now. So question five, uh, question five, uh, 5a. So when finding the strength uh, asymptote and use it to graph each rational function, our goal here is specifically uh, we know that uh, the degree of the numerator here is less than the one which is on the oh the degree of the numerator is greater than the one which is on the denominator. So when you have such a situation, it's that simply tells you that uh, we have the strength, isn't it? Strength asymptote there. So when you have the strength asymptote, we can add a two methods. You can use two methods to, to find the line, the, the strength line, isn't it? So you can either use the long division one or the synthetic division. I'll explain them both in, on two different questions. So for this one, when we're finding the strength, since the power of the denominator is less than the one which is on the numerator, we can say that, okay, let's just try to Sir, can you please repeat what you said before you go any further? So I'm saying when you are dealing with the strength asymptote, eh? there are two things involved. Eh? Yeah. So when you're dealing with the strength, why you have the it was a slant asymptote. Okay. So when you are dealing with the strength asymptote, there are two things involved, isn't it? the power of the numerator must be greater than the one which is on the denominator. Like in this case of uh, we are having the, the power which is on the, the, the denominator is greater than the one which is on the denominator. So we have the strength asymptote. So how do we go about solving the strength asymptote? Then you know that there are two methods you can use to use this polynomial on the numerator, isn't it? So we can use uh, long division or synthetic division. So I'll use long division for this one. Then I'll use synthetic for another example. So for this one, we can say that uh, X is here, isn't it? This is our divide, right? Then this is our dividend. So I have X squared minus one there. So X into this guy here, it is X, right? Then X times X, it is X squared. Then we subtract, isn't it? X minus X squared minus X squared is zero. We drop down the one. So for this guy, we don't, for the strength asymptote, we don't pay attention to the, to the remainder here because the remainder is always going to give us a zero no matter what we do. So we just concentrate on the quotient one. So this is our quotient. Huh? So this guy is our strength asymptote. So we say the quotient here, it's X, isn't it? So we say Y is equals to X. Uh, yes, Mr. Thomas, please go ahead. So, sir, when let's say the power on top is smaller than that of the of the bottom, so which means that there is no slant asymptote. When the power on top is smaller than the one is uh, smaller than that of the bottom. Yeah, there is no asymptote. Let's say this guy was x squared, then we have uh, x there. Unless if they are common terms. Eh? No, I think there is no. What if they are they have the same power? 
They have the same power. Then uh, we use the, this means there's an horizontal line there, sir. Horizontal asymptote. Okay, okay. You have gotten it now. But it should be found on YouTube, right? Ah, yes, yeah. Yes, sir. We proceed. So we know that our question is x. So we say y is equals to x. So now, when we have y is equals to x, uh, our next thing is we find uh, the x-intercept of this function, isn't it? So you know that when finding the x-intercept, uh, we equate uh, y to 0, isn't it? Then we solve for x. We discover that x is equals to plus or minus uh, plus or minus 1, isn't it? So we have 1, comma 0, negative uh one comma zero here so this is our x intercept then our vertical asymptote like i said earlier on it's just we are equating this guy down here isn't it? so our, when this guy is zero the function will be undefined so zero is our vertical asymptote right that's the isn't it so now when you have that we can easily graph our function you know that the, the y is equals to x y is equals to x is just a straight line eh? Starting from this guy here, isn't it? So for the slant, which is y is equals to x, always draw it in the dotted line, isn't it? So this is the dotted line. The y is equals to x, the slant. It goes straight, isn't it? Like that. Hope it's here for the slant. Then we have points here for x. We have 1, comma 0. Sorry, sir, I have a question. Um, that's going back a bit. Where? On, on the... Synthetic division there. Okay. On the synthetic division. Okay. Yeah, how you are um, doing the algebra there? Could you kindly explain? Because I don't know how you're getting negative one, because I'm getting zero. Why are you getting zero from? What is x into x squared? Hello? It's x. It's x, right? So x times x is what? It's x. It's x squared, right? So minus t is x squared. Yeah. So when we subtract this, we're getting what? We're getting a zero. Yeah, we're getting a zero. We get a zero. Yeah, so here is the minus one, isn't it? And then here, <clears throat> nothing. So we're dropping yes. down the negative one. It comes down there. We can't go fair, isn't it? Why are you getting the zero from? Because mm -hmm. here we're just dropping down. Uh, oh, I thought you subtracted. You brought down the. You have seen this now. Yeah. All right, thank you. Okay, so now. Uh, when, when you are sketching this graph, we have y is equals to x, isn't it? So now, when our y is x, this is the line which we have, isn't it? When you pick numbers from the positive, it will be just a straight line because you will pick 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3. It will be going that way, isn't it? So when you pick negative 1, you have negative 1, comma, negative 1, negative 2, comma, negative 2. So it will also go down in the straight line, isn't it? But you should just show that this is the slant asymptote by showing the dotted lines. Yeah, then for, for this part, this, this is the strand. We know that uh, our vertical, vertical asymptote is zero, isn't it? So we know that the, this thing can never cross, isn't it? Can never cross the, the, this line here, which is the, the, the vertical asymptote, right? So if you pick values, for instance, uh, if you were to pick values, you plug in this function, if you were to pick one, for instance, when you plug in one, it will be one minus one, which is just uh, zero over one, isn't it? So when you have zero over one, you know that uh, we can't have such a thing here cross this part, isn't it? So it would be, uh, it can't cross the horizontal line, isn't it? So one day I will be using this x intercept, right? And then when you have your x intercept, for this one, you have one comma, one comma zero, right? So your graph will, will run toward this line. You have this vertical line here, it can't cross this line. So you know that it will bend, it can't be zero, isn't it? So it will bend downward, going that way. And then it will also go that way, isn't it? Since we are looking at it being a straight line, it will follow this uh, slant asymptote going upward. 
Then with the same principle applies here. We use the this intercept that you have. It won't get, uh, it won't cross this uh, vertical asymptote which is there, but it will go upward, going upwards there, going to infinity, and then it will also follow this trend here, going wherever it's going. That's how you go about the trend asymptote in terms of graphing it. Is that okay, please? So isn't this this vertical line, isn't that the question? It is equal to zero. Which one? Mm -hmm. This vertical line that you are considering, isn't it the equation x is equal to zero, but here we have y is equal to zero, which is the x-axis. Why is because that's what I want to know. Now the issue is that uh, you know you have noticed that you have a vertical asymptote at zero, isn't it? Yes. So we know that uh, at zero, this function, the one we are using here, it will be undefined, isn't it? Yes. But to have the strand asymptote, right? When we use the long division, we reduce the polynomial to this strand here. It will be more that the strand itself can pass through zero, isn't it? Yes. But when we are graphing this function, we, are graphing, we have graphed the strand, yes. right? But then with the strand asymptote. Right? Now we are graphing this function here. Yes. This one on top. How do we graph this function on top? You discover that this function on top can't cross the strand asymptote, right? So it can just play along with it in this line going that way. And also it can't cross this line, the vertical asymptote. You say the graph is guiding you already, isn't it? There's a vertical asymptote that can't cross again, so it will bend down on it. The vertical asymptote. Mm -hmm. We can't cross the vertical. This equation is This was our vertical asymptote. Zero. It's always up. All right, I think uh, let us proceed. Please. So for C now, uh, we have uh, the function x squared minus x plus one. So now, when you have such a function, well, now you have noticed that the power. What the question five? Question five. What's the problem with question five? What's your question five? Yeah, yeah so question four. Huh? I, I don't. Um, I'm, I'm behind on the part of graphing. Like, I'm clear with the slant asymptote, but how you are coming up with these two graphs? So these two graphs are a result of this one on top here. This function. Here. Are we okay? Yes. Yeah, so when you look Proceed. at this function, isn't it? How do you graph this function? You know that uh, two real numbers are part of identity. So you know that this function can never equal to zero. So now if you pick any real numbers, you know that uh, this graph for that function, it should always be guided by what well, this sign here. The the strand asymptote. Then we have the vertical asymptote. So we know that our graph, this is the x intercept. Then we can start from here. We are following this line. We can't uh, cross this line, which is our strand. So it will go straight, right? Then when it's coming down again, it can't cross this vertical line. So it will bend. It will go down there. The same thing. It will. The same Why thing. Why is it? Huh? Why are you saying that you can cross this horizontal, this vertical line? Because it will be undefined. Are you in school? Yes. Yeah, I think uh, if you come through the office, mm -hmm. we'll touch on them probably. I think, uh, for now, we can just proceed. Okay. Thank you. For now. When the power of the numerator there, isn't it? It's uh, x to the power two, right? So we know that uh, the power of the numerator is greater than the one on the denominator. That tells you that you have the front asymptote. Then you know that we're now using uh, the synthetic division now to find our strand, isn't it? So when we, we are using synthetic division, we put this guy to zero, isn't it? Then we solve for x. We discover that x is equal to negative one which is our factor, we put it there. Then the coefficient of x squared is one. Then the coefficient of this x there, 
it's negative one. Ne and then the, the last one is just the constant that we just put it there. So now when we're using uh, synthetic division, we start with dropping down the one there. So we have negative one times one, it's negative one. Eh? Negative one plus negative one is negative two. Negative two times negative one is positive two there. Then two plus uh, one is three. So we know that we don't uh, normally pay attention to the remainder when you're dealing with uh, the strength asymptote because the remainder, when you divide the, with the polynomial, it always gives you something at zero. So I have the quotient here to be x minus two because okay. here we have x then minus the constant here, which is just negative two. So our line is y is equals to x minus two. Now, how do we graph this line? We know that uh, y is equals to x. We have negative two there, isn't it? So we're, we're shifting, isn't it? We have something like this. Uh, there's this line here, isn't it? It's starting from our y-intercept is negative two, right? We have negative two there. But since uh, this line here, y, y is equal to x, this, this part here, the y is equal to x, this part which is here, this part which is here, we know that this guy here is a straight line, right? This guy is a straight line. So if we're starting from negative two, we just have to draw dotted lines, isn't it? So we know that uh, our starting point, our starting point is negative two, right? So we just have to put our ruler, then we move isn't it, with this line going that way, straight line up to that down there. So we have this part there, right? And then we also have uh, when you look at uh, our graph here, we know that uh, our vertical asymptote is what? Negative one, right? So we know that our vertical asymptote is negative one. So this is the line here negative one, which is going downwards again. Downward up to there, right? So now when you have these two lines, isn't it? that one and that line. So let's let's assume we find, okay, let's find our X intercept for instance. We know that uh, our X intercept for this function uh, takes place when Y is zero, isn't it? So when we cross multiply this function, we discover that uh, uh, they write down the x intercept. So, I think I didn't use the x intercept. We can just use the y intercept. I didn't find the x intercept. The y intercept, x should be zero, right? So we can normally find also the x intercept, right? So now. For the y intercept, x is zero. So when you plug in zero on, on the x here, you discover that the y intercept will take place at one. So this is the one which is here. Now, if you pick uh, any values eh, in this region here, you discover that uh, uh, when you look at in here, you discover that. Uh, Sir. Yes. Sir. Sir. Mr. George. Uh, now, why aren't you finding the X intercept? I think I forgot to find them in this graph or function. I don't know. But what are you finding when you solve it for your X intercept? Okay, sir. We okay. haven't solved it, sir. No, why you not like uh, we can't use factorization method. It's uh, it can't work. It's not working. Huh? Okay, oh, we'll try fact, to find stuff. In fact, no, it's uh, not. This function has no x intercept. Are we okay? Okay, sir. Yeah, I why? Huh? Uh, why, why doesn't it have uh, the x intercept? I, I, I think it was given us something like complex numbers. Eh? Okay. Yes. Okay, thank you. Welcome. So we just have our y intercept there. So when you pick our values, we know that uh, in this region, we're starting from here, isn't it? Uh, this, uh, for instance, if we were to, you know that this function again, 
when you look at this, we, we have our sum. It was, I think it was difficult. We can't use that cap principle to say our sum is negative one and then our product is one. So now what two numbers can we uh, use uh, to get, uh, when we add them, we have negative one. And then when you multiply them, we have one. Can you guys think of any numbers please? There are no numbers. There are no numbers, right? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so for this one, we just see it the way it is. It's like you can fact even factorize it. So you just use it the way it is. Now, if you're using this guy, we can use the thick small numbers, right? Because you know that uh, you don't use calculators in there. So you know that we have one here, which is in this region. It's like this region is defined. So if you pick one. So, so, so. Yes. So. Yes, Mr. Uh, what if we use uh, the quadratic uh, equation? We can't. Yes, sir. Like if we use the quadratic equation, can't it work? Actually, yeah. it can't work. I've already tried it. Uh, the discriminant is becoming less than zero. Yes, it's giving you complex numbers, right? Okay. Yes. Okay, sir. Thank you. All right. So now, if we pick positive uh, one, isn't it? So when you plug in positive one, it will be one minus one, right? Which is uh, just zero. So we have positive one over two, which is positive. So this tells you that uh, this graph will be heading toward positive in this side. When you look at this part here, it will be it will bend down here. There's a the half because one it will be somewhere here, and then the half which you have found it will be somewhere here. So it will bend this way. If we pick uh, one point two, we can even try to, to pick my values using a calculator to see how it will go, but. Uh, when you just have uh, one value to guide, isn't it? If you pick uh, probably there's 1.5 here, right? When you plug it in here, you discover that uh, this function here, it is always heading toward positive side. It can never be negative. So it will bend this side. It can't cross this front line, but it will bend that way. It's the same as if you will pick values from this side of the graph. Let's pick, for instance, uh, we have uh, uh, 0 0.1 here, right? When you plug in 0 0.1 here, you discover that when you square this guy minus that guy minus 0 0.1 here, it will give you something like, uh, since this guy will be bigger than that one, we have a positive here. So positive and positive, it is still positive. And then positive and positive down here, it is still positive. So that tells you that even if you pick uh, values from this side, it is always going to go upward. Eh? Is that clear, please, on this part? It is. Yeah. Yes, sir, it's clear. Yeah, you, you do the same for this other one, this uh, one which is down here. When you pick to my values in this region, in this region, the graph always pass through inside this part here. And then one thing you guys you should know that uh, the easy way to do graphs, huh? at least you should have some graphs so that you have an idea how they look like. Huh? For instance, you should know how y, y is equal to x, what it looks like, one over x, those simple ones, you should by now you have mastered them at least. Huh? So that it is easy for you when you see a graph, you even have an idea of how it's going to look like. Yeah. We proceed now. We go to something interesting now. I think binomial is always nice for me. Uh, for question six, huh? we've been told to expand uh, the following using Pascal's triangle. Right? So you know that uh, our highest power there was up to five, isn't it? So I expanded this guy up to five. I believe by now you guys uh, already know Pascal's triangle. Right? So you know that uh, when you are starting with Pascal triangles, we have the one here. So you introduce the one there and the one there. So when you add the one, you have the two, which is in the mid, right? So we do the same, we introduce the one and the one there. So we say one plus two is three. Then here on the mid, there's nothing. Two plus one is three, which is there. And then we maintain the one. So if you keep going the same way up to, up to five, where we're going to end. So that simply tells you that when you have one, three, three, one here, you know that our x here is x to the power three. Eh? 
when we are expanding this guy on two of the x plus one, when you when you're using this x plus one, you know that when we have x plus one to the power three, we have x to the power three plus the three which is there, we maintain it. Now the x here reduced by one, while the y will increase by one, isn't it? Here it's y was zero, but here you have increased by one plus the three there, isn't it? The x again it will reduce by one while the y will increase by one. Plus the x when it reduced by one, it is just nothing. So it remain with y to the power three, which is this guy there. So now using this concept, using that concept there, we can solve uh, question uh, 6b. Eh? We have five plus two x to the power three. So when you know that uh, the expansion of uh, uh, x plus y to the power three is this guy there, we can just substitute. Eh? The expansion of x to the power three is this guy here. We can just say where there's x here, there's five there, isn't it? And then where there's y, we have two x. So I just substituting in our function, which we have already expanded using Pascal's triangle. So when we substitute uh, uh, five into x, we have that one. Then we put where there's x, we put five. Where there's y, we put two x. Where, where there's x, we put five again. We substitute in all these. Now, when you're expanding, you know that five to the power three is 125, isn't it? And then five to the power two is 25. Then times three times two, we are getting 150x, right? Plus three times five is 15. Now here, two x is to the power two, right? So we have four x squared, right? Four x squared times 15, we are getting 60 x squared. Then two to the power x, oh, two, two x to the power three is to eight x cubed. That's how you go about solving this Pascal triangle. Any questions, please? So, <clears throat> my question is on the Pascal triangle. Is it supposed to be one, 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 then one, two, one? So I don't know why you skipped one. We have for x to the power three, you know that you have one, three, three, one, isn't it? Yes, I understand on that part. So, and yeah. then when we're just drawing the weren't you supposed to have one, then one, one, then one, two, one? When I'm just doing what this? On the triangle. Yeah. When I've skipped one, one. Have you ever seen a triangle with, with two tips? Isn't it one tip for a triangle? Oh, I've skipped the one one. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I, I've now noticed what you're saying. Bongo. Uh, so you're saying that I skipped the one one there, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah, you are correct on that part. Huh? Yeah, but uh, I believe uh, this capacity uh, here has no marks actually. I was just trying to use it for explanation. Is it okay? Yes, it's okay. All right, thank you so much, Madam, for your quick eyes. Huh? So now, uh, is this uh, part okay now for everyone? Question B, we proceed. Huh? Now, we, are, we have question uh, 6D now. Huh? We know that uh, we have x minus two over x to the power five, isn't it? So now when we, we know that there's power five there, the expansion for this guy is this one here. We have this part here. So now if we have this part here, we know we can now just say, we know that x equals to x, right? There, and then y, what is our y? It's negative two x. So now we're just substituting now in this, expansion of our using the past term, the one we have expanded, isn't it? So now when we substitute in there, we have where there's x, we put an x, then where there's y, we put negative two, negative two over x, isn't it? So when you do the substitution for this function here, everywhere, isn't it? You discover that uh, x to the power five is simply x to the power five, right? Then you have x to the power four there, isn't it? Now there's an x there, down there. So it means that, it, this polynomial, this guy can reduce to x to the power three, and then we say five times negative two, which is the negative 10 x to the power three there, plus 
we have uh, x to the power three there, isn't it? Now here, when you square this guy, it will be four over x squared, right? Then you know that uh, the x squared can reduce this x to the power three. So we have x there, isn't it? Then we have 10 times four, which is 40 there, minus, we have this guy, when you, you, you multiply this guy three times, you discover that you have uh, negative eight over x to the power three. So when you have that, you know that uh, this guy and that guy, they can cancel a bit, so you remain with x down here, isn't it? So now, negative eight times 10, we're getting negative 80 over the x, which remains there. We do the same for this guy. You multiply it four times, you discover that uh, when two goes uh, four times, it's uh, 32. Huh? So 32 times, uh, uh, where is it? Did I the correct thing there? Oh yeah, so it's 32 times five, which we are getting eight here over x to the power three, because this would be x to the power four, right? Then it cancels with this x, with this x which is down here. It will be x to the power three, which is there. Then for this one, then when the negative two comes five times, it's just negative the two over x to the power five. Is it clear, please? So then negative two over four. Huh? Isn't negative two to the power four sixteen? Yes, sixteen times five. So kindly asking if you can repeat. <coughs> okay, I'll start from this part because I believe this one is a little bit straightforward. We have just substituted here. What is y? We are putting negative two over x, right? And then what is x? We are putting back the x. In this uh, expansion of ours, we have t, isn't it? So now, when we are substituting now, you know that what is x is uh, x, x, as in, so it is x to the power five, which is uh, x to the power five there. Then, uh, uh, yes, Madam Anna. So why are we substituting? Okay, you know that x plus one to the power five, the expansion is this one, isn't it? Are we okay with that part? Yes. Yeah, so now, since if you know that uh, this is the expansion, there there is five, right? You're using the Pascal triangle. So here you have x and there you have x, isn't it? Then on y, you have positive y, it? but there there's a negative two, uh, negative two over x, isn't it? So you are saying that uh, x is equals to x, right? Because x is equals to x and these two, they are the same, right? But uh, y is equals to negative two, two over x in this uh, function here. You have seen it? Eh? Yes. So now the y, which is negative two over x, we'll be substituting it here. So here we have negative two over x, isn't it? So when the, we press the negative two, and then here we still maintain the same x because x to substitute for x is still x, isn't it? So when you plug in negative two over x, this x will cancel that one. So we have x to the power three times negative two, isn't it? Which is giving us negative 10, which we'll have down here, I think so. We have negative 10 x to the power three. Have you seen it when you substitute now here? This is the substitution. All right, thank you, sir. Okay. Okay, so now for this part now, this guy, when you square it, it will give you positive four over x squared. Then x squared can cancel this x, which is out there. It will reduce to just x here. Then now it is 10 times the four, which is in here, which is giving us 40 x here, minus. We know that uh, here there's a power three, so there's a negative there. So it will be eight, isn't it? When you cube root two, negative two, you get negative eight. Negative eight times uh, 10 there, it's negative eight, isn't it? And then here we have x squared, right? Then here, down here, we have x to the power three. So this guy, we can say x squared can easily reduce this guy, which is down here, x to the power three to x, just, isn't it? So this is why we're getting negative eight, eight over x plus uh, negative two to the power four, it's 16, isn't it? 
it is thin, and then you have extra charcoal down there. So 16 times 5 is 80, which is there, isn't it? And then x to the power 4 can be reduced by this x to x to the power 3. So I've been x to the power 3, that's why it should be positive. H over x to the power 3. When you multiply this guy five times, you get a negative x2 over x to the power 5. Is it clear now, please? Yes, and now I'm clear. Okay. I think uh, on question six, uh, we are done. We use the same concept for the remaining one. So I've done two. So the remaining two, you do them. So we go to question seven. The question is uh, expand the following using the binomial theorem. So the binomial theorem, we're going to use this one because it's much easier than the other one for n choose what, n choose what. It's that one, I think it's complicated though. So, but for this one, it's straightforward when you use this binomial theorem here. So we know that uh, our first question, uh, often we have five plus, uh, five plus two x to the power three, isn't it? So we are using uh, the, the binomial theorem to expand this guy. So you know, you know that our a there is what? It's five, isn't it? And our x there, it's two x. Right? Yes, it's two x. So we just substitute using this binomial theorem up to the power ending up to three, isn't it? So now when we substitute what is a there, we put a five. Then a, our n here, is three, isn't it? So we put a three there plus our n there is three. Our a it's five, isn't it? Because this is our a. We say a, and then when n reduced by one, it is three minus one, which is two there. Then our x is simply two x, isn't it? So we have two x there plus our n there is three. And then three minus uh, one, it's two, which is there, isn't it? And then our a, which is there, it is five, isn't it? Now, since our n is three, which is three minus one, it is just, uh, this is the power five, which is still five, isn't it? Then x, our x for this guy here in this function, it is two x, isn't it? So we plug in two x, it says squared, isn't it? Over, two choose the same as two times one. Plus, uh, Plus, can you end up to, up to three, isn't it? Because our expansion here ends up to three. So we have three, when we plug in here for three, isn't it? We say here we have the three, isn't it? Then three minus one, it's two, right? Which is down here, there's a two there. And then three minus two, it's one, which is there. Then we have A, it's five, isn't it? Now, three minus three, since our N is now three on this point, 3 minus 3 is 0, isn't it? So it is 5 to the power 0. Then our x here, it is 2x, which is there. So we have 2x to the power 3. Then we go down. We know that uh, the 3 choose the same as 3 times 2 times 1. So now when we are here, we can now start doing the, the simplification. So you know that uh, 5 to the power 3 is 125. And then 5 squared is 25. In 5 times uh, 2, that's uh, 50, isn't it? Now, 50 times 3, we're getting 150. Fifty times 3, we're getting 150x. Plus, uh, we go to this part here. We have two down there, isn't it? So we can just go direct. You say two into two, it's one, isn't it? Three times five, it's 15. Then here we have the four, isn't it? Now, four times uh, 15, 
15, we are getting 60, 70. Now there's the x squared here. So we say 60 times the same x squared, we maintain 60 times x squared is just 60 x squared. We expand this one now. We have the three down there, isn't it? So three times three and three, they can easily cancel these, isn't it? And the two here can cancel that one. So we have one there, we have one there, we have one there. So the, the denominator is gone, there's one. And then so this guy, there's one, isn't it? So five to the power zero is one, isn't it? And then two x to the power three, it's just eight x cubed. Then you are done using the binomial theorem there. That's how you expand that question. Any questions, please? Uh, yes. So, yes. when expanding that, is it a must that uh, you should show the method which you have used, the way you have done it on top there? Uh, you mean this method? Yes. Yeah, sometimes uh it's important because it will be guiding you and then sometimes lecturers normally give like a half a mark for showing the formula isn't it carry you know that it's not easy to remember this one when you're under pressure all right, all right. <laughs> but uh is this clear though yeah, you look like it's very clean We go to question seven D. Uh, so we are using the binomial theorem, isn't it? To expand the x minus two over x to the power five. So now using the same principle here, we know that when we draw down this formula here, the one we have. I hope three you guys have now mastered this formula, how it goes. So we have this part here and that part. So we have to end up to five when the power here is five. Just know that you should have a five choose somewhere here, isn't it? For this formula, I believe it's even there in when you are using John Bed. I think John Bed is very good when it comes to binomial theorems. Just look at it in John Bed. He will explain it much better for this uh, formula. So now, since we have been told to find this uh, this guy using the binomial theorem expansion, you just know that uh, where there is the uh, x here, here we have a, isn't it? So we'll be substituting where there is x here, we have a, isn't it? So here we put x there, isn't it? And then our n is 5. And then this guy. Here we have negative two x, which is our x on this part. You know that our x on this guy it will be negative two over x, isn't it? So when you look at uh, this expansion, we'll be just substituting that one on top. So we have x to the power five. When you look at our a here, it's uh, our a there. It's it's x, isn't it? So since a is equals to x, isn't it? So you know that uh, we have something like this. We have. Uh, a is equals to x, right? And then we have uh, x there on that other side is equals to negative two over x, isn't it? Since we know this fact, see, isn't it? So we'll be using uh, this formula now to just substitute. Eh? We'll be using this formula to just substitute. Like for instance, uh, here where there's a, we put an x, isn't it? So when you put an x there, and then where there's n, we know that uh, our n is five, right? So keep in mind again that uh, our n is equals to five. Huh? Yeah. So a. A E is equals to X, isn't it? So we put plug in X there, and then our N is equals to five, we put the five, so we have X to the power five, right? Then our N here is five. A it's what? A it's X, isn't it? So we plug in X there, isn't it? And then N is five. Then we have uh, five minus one, we have four. And then what is our X? Our X is negative two over X. We do the same here. We plug in N is five. 
and then we have five minus one, which is four. Then when you do all these plugins, you will find that uh, you have something which is down here. You have something like this. When you plug in your values of uh, A and uh, the values of X and N, you have something like this. So now when you have something like this uh, up to the fifth power here, your next job is just to expand it now. So for this one, it's here as X to the power five. Now we come here. We have X down there, isn't it? So this X, can, that X can cancel into, so we have X to the power three. Now five times uh, negative two, we're getting uh, negative 10 X to the power three, which should be down here. We have minus 10 X to the power three. So now we go to this top one, isn't it? When you, when you expand this guy here, we have, uh, there's a two there, isn't it? So since you're not using a calculator, you can always start by simplifying things. So two into four, we have uh, two, isn't it? So two times five, it's simply 10, isn't it? So we have a 10 here, x to the power three. Now, when you square this guy, we have four over x, to x squared, isn't it? So the x squared can cancel with this guy. It just remains with x, isn't it? So now we have, uh, we have a 10 here, 10 times, Four, it's a uh, 40x. Eh? So now the 40x is the one we are having here plus 40x. Then we go again on this part here. We have uh, five, four, three here when we do the simplification. So we say the three can cancel that three, isn't it? Then the two can go into that four. So we have uh, two times five, it's 10, isn't it? So I have a 10 here. So now when you, you put this guy, we get negative two cubed is uh, negative eight, right? Then x uh, cubed is simply x to the power three. So now there's x squared there. The x squared can cancel this guy. So now we have negative eight times 10, which is negative eight. This here will remain with an x. It will be over uh, the same x. We have minus eight over x, the one we have in there. So you do the same on this part here. Since it's four choose, we have your four choose in this function here. Four choose, don't forget the choose to multiply them. So we have four times three times two times one. It's four choose, isn't it? So the four and that four can go away. The three and three can go. The two and two can go. So we have remained with five, isn't it? Five, there's X, isn't it? So now we have noticed that there's X there. So the X which is here can go. Here we have X to the power three. So since it's four here, isn't it? So now what is negative two to the power four? It is, uh, positive uh, 16, right? So 16 times five, we are having uh, 80, positive 80 over X to the power three, the one we are having here, 80 over X to the power three. So we do the same for this guy here. We have five here, you have noticed that there's five times four times three times two, and then there are common terms there, isn't it? So you know that the five can go, the four can go, the three can go, and the two can go. You just remain with this guy here. So of negative two to the power five is negative 32. Then x to the power five, we're having x to the power five itself. That's how you go about solving this equation. Is it clear, people? So can you kindly go back a bit? I want to just copy on something. Okay. Just, just repeat the process. Uh, uh, no, for binomial theorem, guys, what's important is you knowing how to go about manipulating this formula here. Mm. Yeah, so you know that we start with the a to the power n, right? Plus n, a, n minus one, right? x, introduce an x here. This is a standard one. Plus, when you reach here, this part where you start introducing the two choose, eh? so you know that you have n, n minus one, this part, you always reduce the n minus two here. You start with one, reduce it with two. The x keeps on increasing. Here, x was one, but here, x is two. So we say we have two choose down there. Plus, here to the three choose. Yeah, I want you to listen to me. Okay. So we have uh, n there, isn't it? So. Our n is what? 
we have n there, right? We're expanding this function here. So we have n, we always maintain this part, n minus one. But since we have gone to three, we introduce this other part here, n minus two here in this uh, binomial theorem. Over three choose, then the n now, the a to the power n reduced by three, since here it was reduced by two, here to reduce by three, and then x will increase by one. So since here it was x squared, here to be x to the power three. You do the same for everything. So we have n minus two. We bring another n here, n minus three here, when it's four choose down there. So when you have all this, you continue going. So let's say for instance, if, uh, if our power, if our power for this one was ending up to six, we could have something like, uh, like this. We could have uh, n there, right? We open, right? We have n again, minus one, right? We close, we have uh, n minus two, huh? we close again, we have uh, n minus three, we close, huh? we have uh, n minus four, we close again, isn't it? We open again, since it's ending up to six, we have n minus five, huh? we close, huh? Then here we just write over, isn't it? Over six, choose, isn't it? Then here, what are we going to have? You know that our A will be now N minus uh, six, isn't it? This is our A. And then now our X here, since our X was five there, our x here to increase again by one, which will be just six there. Is it now clear now to go about uh, this formula here? Uh, I assume it's now okay. So now, since uh, we have known how to go about manipulating this formula here, your next job is just to relate things. You know that in this function of ours, we have, uh, we have our x here, isn't it? This x is mapped to that one down there. And then this x, which is here, is mapped to that one there. And then our n here is what? It's 5 there. So we'll be just substituting in this original expansion of ours, this expansion of ours here we have there. We'll be substituting those values here, the one that we have been told to find. We'll be just substituting in this function here. So now, when we start doing those uh, substitution, we discover that uh, we will have something like, uh, we have something like when we are starting to substitute, we have this function here. What is A? We put uh, X in it. So it took X to the power five plus, what is N here? We put a five. What is, uh, what is A? We put an X there, isn't it? To the power four. Then where there's uh, x in this equation, it's negative two over x, right? We put the negative two over x there. Then we do the same. So here to be, this is our n. Then here we have n minus one. So it would be five minus one, which is the four, which is here. Then here, our x, it's what? Our x is, uh, our a, our a here it is, uh, it is uh, n, uh, n minus two. So here to be, uh, it will be three. Then when you substitute the, the A here, we're just putting X. So it will be X to the power three, isn't it? So we substitute the same thing here. So now when you, you have substituted everything, your next job is just to start doing the manipulation now. You start playing around with your figures. So what you do is that uh, here we have X to the power four. We maintain it the way it is. But here we have negative two over X, isn't it? So this X, which is down here, can cancel that one there. So it remain with uh, x to the power. So uh, here when this x, this x can cancel that one there, isn't it? So it remain with uh, x to the power three, isn't it? So now x to the power three times five, it's uh, five x, right? There's a negative two there. Negative two times, this is 10, times negative two there. Negative two times uh, five x squared, 
we're having what? We're having negative 10, negative 10 x to the power what? To the power three. So that's where this guy is coming from down here. We have a negative 10 x to the power three. So this part is straightforward. So now when we, we have that now, we can do the same for the remaining ones. So you know that uh, when you're expanding the second one here, this one, which is down there, you know what you should do is that here, if you have noticed, the two is common, right? So we can cancel this two and that four down there. So we have two there, isn't it? So two times that is 10. Eh? So we have a 10 there. So now here there's x to the power three, isn't it? And then here, when you square this guy, you have uh, four over x. Now the x here is squared, right? So you put a squared there, isn't it? So now x squared, this x squared can cancel with that other one, which is here, isn't it? So here we we'll remain with x, so it will be 10 x times four, isn't it? The four, the four which is here. So it will be 10, which is when you cancel this guy here, we have a two there, right? So it will be five times two is a 10 times this x, which means that it is 10 x times four, we're getting 40 x. So this is the 40 x which we have. Okay, so this is the the 40 x we have there. So we do the same for every one of these. Just doing the manipulation there, where we have uh, where we have this part here. We know that three can cancel that three, and then two can go into four. So we have two times five, which is uh, ten, isn't it? The x to the power three. And that guy can cancel it. So we have x down there, isn't it? And then here there's negative uh, 2 to the power 3, which is the same as negative 8. Negative 8 times 10, we're getting negative 80 over x. The x which remain there, this is where this negative 8 is coming from. Then for this part here, you know that uh, we have this guy here. The 4 and the 4 can go. The 3 and the 3 can go. The 2 and the 2 can go. So the x, which is here, can cancel the one, the x to the power four, you have x to the power three there, isn't it? When they cancel. So now negative two to the power four is 16 times five, it's just uh, 80 over x to the power three. The one we're having down here, 80 over x to the power three. So when we expand the last one now, you discover that there's a five, four, three, two, one there, isn't it? Then on top we have a five, four, three, two, one. This is the simplest one because this can easily go, right? We can easily cancel this one to one. Now, negative two to the power five is just negative the two. And then x to the power five is just x to the power five itself. Is it now clear, please? Yes, but um, so, sir, here, can you also um, uh, Use uh, that other method of um, uh, doing what of uh, Pascal's triangle minus uh, showing the process, the uh, showing but this. The question is the question is binomial binomial theorem. Yeah, wait, sir. Uh, so the, the question yeah, but, is the one okay, it looks guiding. like uh, okay. the question is the one guiding if they, have, they haven't guided you you can use what, what you are comfortable with but here the question says use binomial theorem <laughs> thank you so much uh, sir for that point uh, we'll proceed now huh? okay so I think uh, we've just made with two questions. Where we'll end here. So on question eight now. Yes, please. Uh, the last, 
the number seven questions you were solving were not number seven. Yeah, I've just so done I was doing number six, but it's in the place of seven. But it's the same thing. You just apply the method of seven. Yeah. What matters is, uh, me, my job is very easy, isn't it? You know, I just have to guide you. Now you should solve the question. Eh? Then the remaining ones, you just have to solve them according to the way I've shown you. Is that clear? <laughs> Okay. Uh, we got to question eight. Question eight is uh, asking us to say, uh, if X is such that the terms involving X to the power five and half powers can be neglected, find an approximate expansion of one plus X over two, least uh, to the 20, isn't it? Uh, yes, uh, that's the correct one for question eight. So now, when we've been told uh, to find uh, the terms involving X, isn't it? but we're excluding any term greater than five, isn't it? involving X to the power five uh, up to 20. Isn't it? So you know that your goal is you have to expand this formula, isn't it? using this formula. You have to expand it up to, up to X to the power five, isn't it? So now uh, I believe uh, for this one again, uh, you can even use the the one you are using. Is it the Pascal's triangle? Yeah. So now for the Pascal's triangle, we just have to end up to four, but you just have to do the easy substitution there. I believe it could also work, isn't it? Yeah. So, but you just have to end up to four because here on question eight, they haven't specified which uh, which method to use. So if X is such that the terms moving X to the power five and their powers, we integrate them like we don't pay attention to them. So we are just ending at X to the power four. So now using this binomial theorem, we can find the uh, terms up to X to the power four just, isn't it? So now here we have noticed that uh, our eight, what, it's one, right? And then our X in this equation, it is X over two, isn't it? X over two, and then our n is 20, right? Our n is 20. So now using this uh, binomial theorem here, using this binomial theorem, we know that we just substitute what we have in this formula here. So keep in mind that uh, when you have this formula here, guys, it will help you. Right? You know that binomial theorem, they don't miss in the exam. They are coming, it's a must. So make sure that you have mastered this formula. For the Pascal's triangle, it might not always be useful because what if they tell you to expand up to 20, isn't it? Life will become easier. You have, you have, in short, you have a lot of uh, answer booklet just for one question. Although it's good that uh, you guys have mastered the Pascal triangle, but uh, when you know this, this one at least, it will save you space and time. So now, when you are substituting now, we know that where there is A here, we are just putting a one there, isn't it? Then where there's N, we put a 20. Where there's A, we put back a one. So when you do the substitution for this guy, you discover that uh, we have something like this. We have just substituted everything here in the formula we have. Then we start doing the simplification for this function here. We know that uh, one will be the same thing here. We have our one there, isn't it? Then 20, then here there's x to 2, isn't it? Now, x uh, over 2 here, we know that uh, 2 can go into this guy here, isn't it? Which is uh, 2 into 20, isn't it? We have 10. Then 10 times 19, we have in what? Oh, sorry, sorry about that. Eh? It is one to the power 19. So we have uh, one to the power 19, it's one, isn't it? And then two into 20, it's 10. 10 times x, huh? that's why we're getting uh, this 10x here. Then we do the same here, isn't it? Now, here we have uh, 20. So since it is uh, uh, here, we have n minus one, isn't it? so it's 20 minus one. That's where this uh, 19, which is here, it's coming from. So now we have 
one to the power eight is just one, right? So x over two here to be four, isn't it? Over x to be x squared over four. Then there's a two here. Two into into twenty. It's what? It's uh ten, isn't it? And then there's a four there, isn't it? So now, uh, it is uh, uh ten times uh nineteen, which is here, which is one nine, isn't it? So there's a four there, isn't it? You can't forget about the four. So it will be one ninety x squared, isn't it? Over four, right? So when you divide one ninety divided by two, we're having uh ninety five, isn't it? But there was it was four there, isn't it? So it remains with another two here. It will be ninety five x squared over two. We do the same for this part here. It is three times two when you know that uh, this is three twos, right? It is three times two times one, isn't it? So the two can go into 18. Uh, you remain with uh, two into 18 is what? It's nine, right? Now, nine, three can go into nine, three times, isn't it? So three into nine again, it's just the three which is on top here, isn't it? So we have uh, three times uh, 20 times 19. And then here we have x to the power three over two, isn't it? So when you multiply this guy here, we are getting uh, we are getting this part here, isn't it? Sixty times nineteen, because uh, here we have uh, three, three. Here there is a there is a two, right? So we say two into twenty, it's uh it's ten, right? Then ten times three is thirty, isn't it? Are we together there? Yes, sir. Yeah. So we have something like 60 times 19 over 8 there, isn't it? Because uh, here for this one, I didn't divide in the, the two, which is that side. So if you maintain that way, we have 60 times 19 over 8, x to the power 3. So when you, reduce, you can reduce this guy again, isn't it? So you can say 2 there, isn't it? Or just 4. We have something like uh, 4 into 8, it's 2, isn't it? And then here we have four into sixty. It's what? Hello, what is four into sixty? Fifteen. It's fifteen. 15. Huh? Yes. Now, when you multiply fifteen times nineteen, you should get uh, two eight five. And then keep in mind that uh, for these values, uh, uh, you just have to multiply them in the exam, though. So you just have to be quick. Huh? So it will be 285 over 2 x to the power 3, isn't it? So you do the same here, the same multiplication here. You discover that you have 4,845 over 16 x to the power 4, and so on. Since we're just ending up to x to the power 4, they said that uh, we shouldn't include any term which is higher than x to uh, the power 4, isn't it? We should exclude the x to the power 5 up to 20. Is it clear, please? Yes. It is on my side. All right, let's do the last one. Huh? Yeah. yeah, so for the last one, question nine. Uh, this is the last one for today. Uh, question nine. Question so, nine. So. Yes, please. So. Before we proceed, I wanted to ask, so in this one, binomial theorem, yes. there won't be anything like using a calculator and writing the exams, right? No, no, no. So you just have to reuse the, what's this? Go to the Because I don't know. Yeah, I think. There was, uh, there was a certain lecture I was attending. Okay. And the sentence I was like, no, since uh, this binomial theorem, if I'm the one who's uh, preparing the questions when I feel like you can feel the, you can use the calculator, uh, I'll tell you to use the calculator and go and even and going through the examples, he was answering the questions using the calculator. Yeah, very. Okay, for that part, uh, I'm not... So at that point, uh, I became confused. Yeah, yeah. In first years, uh, no calculators are out. So I was like, became confused. Mm -hmm. 
Actually, yeah. it was. Uh, yeah, that's that's what we also know. But the sound was like. Uh, no, that's why I always say that uh, normally. The sound was like for me if I'm the one who's preparing. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's how I know my dad. I also remember the doctor Kambore, Kambore, something. Yeah, you also remember it. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Yeah. I, get yeah. I get your point. I get your point. I think if it's Dr. Kambore, probably it could change the situation. Like, I think he's the doc and he's the one setting. You guys could be the first ones to use calculators. Eh? Oh. Yeah, you could be the lucky first one. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Yeah, probably you just have to pray and uh, push to use a yeah. isn't it? Okay, so <laughs> all right. So for question nine, you know the trick for question nine when you have been told that to expand each of the following expression in ascending powers, know what it means to ascend in ascending powers of x up to and including the term x to the power three. So we we just interested in the term x to the power three, right? Then we have been given this function, which is uh, we solved the uh, c. Yeah? C was one plus x squared, one plus two x. The remaining ones are just similar because the concept is the same. We're ending up to x to the power three there. So you know that in your formula, you are just expanding this guy up to x to the power three there. This x to, when you want to see the x to the power three, you stop your expansion. You just put the like plus there and the dotted line. I hope it's clear. So when you know that you have this function here, then you know that one plus x squared, this guy is straightforward. But here we have an edge, isn't it? So we can expand this guy using this formula on top, right? So where there's, uh, where there's a, here there's one, right? So we put a one there isn't it? in this expansion. What is our end here? It's eight. Now, one to the power eight, it's one, isn't it? Plus our end, it's what? It's eight there, isn't it? Now, what is our a? Our a here, it's one, isn't it? We put a one here. What is our x? Our x for this case, it is two x, isn't it? This two x here, we're expanding this function here. We're expanding this function here. We're not yet interested in this one, but we're starting with expanding this one here. So now, if you do the expansion for this one, you'll notice that uh, our x there is two x, isn't it? So we just substitute in this formula, where there's x here. Our x here, it becomes two x, isn't it? And then plus, our n is what? It's eight, right? This is eight. And then eight minus one, it's seven, the one we are having there. And then our eight, what? Our eight is just one, so it will just go away, it will disappear, it's not, we can't show it there. Then our x here, it is two x, the one we are having there, isn't it? This is our x. So we plug in where this x it puts two x. We do the same for everything. You discover that uh, when you just plug in, life becomes easy. Your next job is just to simplify. You just simplify now. So now we have eight and seven there, isn't it? So we have two x squared. Isn't it? We start with this one. This one it just goes direct to say it's one. Eight times two x it's ten x. Two into eight, it's four, isn't it? Then here we have uh, two squared, isn't it? This is four x squared. Four x squared times uh, four, it, it is 10 x squared. 10 x squared times seven, we're having one twelve x squared, isn't it? One twelve x squared plus uh, eight, seven, six here, isn't it? So you can easily say that uh, this guy here, it is eight x to the power three, isn't it? So we know that the, the three can go into six, we have a two there, and the two can go into eight, we have a four there, isn't it? So we have something like, uh, we have a four there, right? And we also have a two there. And then here we have uh, eight x, isn't it? The power three, isn't it? So when you multiply eight times two, you get 10, 10 times four, you get what you get, and then times the seven here, your final answer should be this guy here, 4,448 x to the power three. So when you're done with this part here, expanding up to x, x to the power three here, when you just hit x to the power three, you stop your expansion, then you multiply it with this other one now, because we're just interested in terms up to uh, starting from uh, x to the power zero, 
up to x to the power three. So the moment you reach that point there, you know that uh, you have to multiply with this one here. So when you have this guy here, your job is now just multiplying the remaining one. So you have something like uh, one plus x squared, you get the whole thing here, you put it in this guy here, you are multiplying now, you're now multiplying them. So now when you're multiplying, you know that it could be one and everything here, you get everything there, isn't it? Then you start with this x here, x squared times one, it is, it is giving you x squared, which is there, right? Then x squared times one twelve, one twelve x squared, oh sorry, x squared times 16x, you are giving you're getting 16x to the power three. Now, x squared times one to x squared, which is x to the power four. And then in our question, they are saying that we just have to include terms up to x to the power what? To the power three. So we just end here. We don't include this guy. When you end there, then you just have to add what you have. So it will be the one who will come down the way it is. So we have uh, the screen will come down. So. 112x squared plus the x squared here, you're having 113x squared. And then 16x to the power three plus uh, 448x to the power three, you're having 464x to the power three plus and so on and so forth. Then you're done for now to expand uh, this function, uh, including the terms up to x to the power three in ascending order. Is it now okay? Yes, sir. Any question? Can you just go up on question one? I just want to see something. Okay. There. No question one, the first question. I wasn't there, so I just want to see the way you answered. Question one. Question one, what? For vet question two. Uh, I think that's the one. No, this same no, it's just on binomial theorem where you started from. That's where he wants to see. Okay, so you're saying uh, where we started from. Is it uh, question six? Here. There was no yes on that there. same one. Yes. So for this one, sir, it's just a matter of you uh, knowing this formula, then you just substitute. I think I will just post the video after this. It seems people are tired. Let me just finish the last part. You can just, you know, watch the video. So I think I will post it. You just watch my face face, then you'll be done on what you missed out. So, uh, where are we? So that was the expansion. Then when you have uh, question 9e, isn't it? Question 9e involves uh, these terms, isn't it? We have 1 plus 2x. So why do you post the videos on YouTube or on Moodle? On YouTube. Yes. Uh, the, the, the website yeah. is I think I've sent it to your class tapes. Yes, Mr. Chanda. Huh? Yes, carry on, sir. What's the question? Uh, yes, sir. What the questions involving negative powers? Okay, for those you have questions. Uh, for those, I think you just have to do simple manipulation. Right? Let's see. Do you have negative powers down here? Uh, I think we have on question 18. Yeah, I think we'll look at them on question 18. We have uh, 
expansion involving negative powers, we'll do them when we meet next time, hopefully it will be. You guys just go through it so that it's easy for me to just explain, turn through it, so that you finish first the theory. Just try to, to go through them so that when I'm just explaining, it will be just a walk over, more of like a revision. Yeah, so you should, should turn the answer. Yeah, so you guys, I want you to be solving. I don't want to be solving for you. I realize that uh, you guys are not doing much of the solving. <laughs> it's like oh, you're just waiting for me to solve. Huh? It really hates that, right? Oh, sir. Okay. So, uh, for the last one, which involves uh, this concept, we have uh, three things this size, isn't it? Like a quadratic equation. You know what you should do is uh, just uh, expand, expand this part here. This part up to x to the power three, isn't it? When you expand using the formula on top, you get this uh, this values here. You can even use uh, is it the Pascal's triangle when expanding this? If you are, you find it easy using the Pascal's triangle, you can just expand this one using the Pascal's triangle. So when you expand this guy here, you discover that you just get the, the same guy, and you you put it in here, isn't it? up to here it's been up to infinity. then you start multiplying again one times everything here it will give you everything there right so you have everything up to 283 isn't it then you start again with a two times uh one two x times one is two x which is there right then two x times uh 84 uh sorry two x times one is the two x which is there right then two x times 14 x isn't it we're having a uh, 28x squared. Then we know that uh, 2x times uh, 280x to the power 5, it will give you something. The power will go up to 5, right? So we're not interested in powers of 5. So we end here with the 2x. We end up to this guy here, the 14. Then, uh, oh, so we end up to 8. Is it 14? Yeah, we end up to 14, isn't it? Because uh, when you multiply... Uh, it's 28, uh, yeah, sorry, sorry. So I have 2x times 14x, it is 28x, right? And then 2x times 84, uh, x squared, isn't it? We're having 168 x to the power 3. So we end here where there's x to the power 3. We can't go further with the multiplication. We pick the negative, uh, the negative x squared, yes. Negative x squared times 1, we're having negative x squared there. And then Negative x squared times negative 14x, we're having negative 14x to the power 3. So when you have this, you just do the simplification. You discover that uh, here we have the 1, right? And then 14x, isn't it? 14x plus the 2x, which is there, we're having 16x. And then 84x squared plus 28x squared, we're having 111x squared. Then when you have 111x squared, you say plus again, 280 to the power x to the power 3 minus uh, uh, negative 14 x to the power 3 plus uh, 168 x to the power 3. We're having 434 x to the power 3. Then you have ended here. You have finally done your job. You get your full mark. You have expanded up to x to the powers up to in ascending powers of x to the power 3. Is it free or now to do question 8? Is it nine now? Is it okay, people? Yes. I think before it is there, we'll meet next time. Sir. Yes. Sir. Uh, is it always that, is it a math that we have to write, for example, like the way you've written, now multiply, like you're explaining? Okay. For everything that you saw. Yeah, no, like right. substitute if we're substituting, do you have to show that? Yeah, I believe uh, when you're showing that, showing your weight normally, you know, it depends if the lecturer how he's marking. So you find that in the exam, you are showing your weight like he's able to prove. Let's say if you just you're showing your weight, then you make an error somewhere, isn't it? They they will be able to follow your weight. So to say, I talk the person who's substituting correctly, but where did they go wrong? 
Now, if you go direct, then you make a mistake. Eventually, there's nothing to mark there. You have gotten it? Eh? Yes. Wonderful. Thank you. Ah, we will see you guys next time. So, yes, please. Uh, what, what about the scriptures when I go and send them? Huh? When are you going to send the solutions? Yeah, I'll send probably for a weekend or what. I just have to check them out because there are some which I feel as if they are, they are necessary though for now. I'll send though, don't worry, sir. I always send though, don't I send, please? Uh, yes, you send. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll send, don't worry. Just keep on running through. Next time we meet you guys, prepare in advance. Right. Yeah, go through the solution so that's why you're having challenges. That's when I will show you how to go about overcoming those challenges. See you and do the best. Sir. 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 Yes, please. Sir. Yes. Um, I wanted to find out concerning the test two. Okay. We're supposed to be having after next week. So is it? Going to be a multiple choice thing, or maybe how, how how is it going to be arranged? Yeah, for that one, there are two options. It just depends with how the doc will prepare it, because it's the one who is going to prepare it. I think he'll let you know. Yeah, because if you have to use the probably you have to send the is it PDF like how the one three one did not their test because they were using let's say they solved then they send by using bit PDF, isn't it? You just make like a document. Or oh, it will be more for choice like the one the quiz this uh, group here I have in today. So you should yes, just start from the doc himself to guide you properly. Eh? Right, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you.